Today, we will continue our journey through Jurassic World with a new roster of deadly beasts ready to bring pain and death to anyone stupid enough to get in the way. We've covered Sorna, Nublar, and the mainland. But now we will visit a strange island filled with all sorts of engineered threats that could end human life in seconds. Manticorp Island. Join us as we put our unlucky test subject through a series of simulations that are not suitable for people with weak stomachs. So if you're ready to witness pain and would like to see more, please take a moment to like and subscribe and get ready for the new 8 Ways to Die in Manticorp Island. Before we put our test subjects up against our dreadful beasts, let us quickly show you how you can also try to take on a more dangerous monster in Raid Shadow Legends, our sponsor. A free-to-play game available on both mobile and PC where over 600 champions are at your disposal to wage war against raid bosses, dungeon runs, campaign battles, and PvP arena matches. To play, just hit that link in the description or scan this QR code. One of the hardest challenges in this game is fighting bosses, and this game is filled with them. But one stands out, Hellraiser. You know him, we show him off all the time. In battle, this monster fires death at your champions and has an entire host of debuffs. Every few turns, it will rear up and prepare to light you up, but while it does that, this portion of its health turns purple. Seize this opportunity to hurt this dragon, and it will remove this portion and cancel its attack. Fail to do this and suffer. Smart players will assemble a team with champs that can clear debuffs and inflict lots of damage, since our fiery friend here is hard to kill. This month, Raid will introduce the third season of the Forge Pass, where you can win rewards including the limited edition artifact set. Raid's also bringing out some new champs, along with some new skins for the incredible Madame Ceres. But also, later this month, Raid is giving this game's most picked on champ a much deserved upgrade by becoming a legendary champion. So if you want to take part in all of this awesomeness, new players can hit the link below or scan this QR code to get a free starter pack worth almost $30, including Tayrol and this in-game loot. You'll find your rewards here for the next 30 days only, so don't be sleeping on free stuff, man. Thanks to Raid for supporting the channel, and now let's get back to the episode. Number 1. Phagomized Manticorp Island is home to many dangerous creatures, many which reside in separate artificial biomes. One of these biomes, the desert, houses three dangerous animals that could bring a swift end to anyone dumb enough to provoke them. Meet the Kentrosaurus, a stegosaurid with similar features to its larger relative, the Stegosaurus. But this one is smaller, but with a lot more spikes and more ways to kill. Note how this dinosaur has two large spikes on its shoulders, which could have also been used for offense. Admittedly, this animal was depicted to be docile towards humans, but do not let animals like this fool you. If provoked, even the most docile of animals can turn deadly. In our simulation platform, all dinosaurs are lethal killers. This animal's long tail armed with spikes could be its primary weapon. Because the Kentrosaurus is a smaller dinosaur, this means that the trajectory of these spikes would potentially pierce any of these locations on an average-sized human. Unless you get stabbed directly in the heart or main arteries, expect puncture wounds of up to 6 inches in diameter. Yes, if a spike finds its way through your torso, you'll be able to see right through your body, moving any organs aside or just flat out piercing them. This will hurt so much that depending on how your body reacts to pain, you may just pass out from shock. But that's not all. The impact force behind the strike would be enough to knock the air out of you. So this combination of lying unconscious with a gaping wound would only mean you wouldn't make it out of this one alive. Getting killed by a Kentrosaurus would be 100% your fault for being dumb and threatening this animal up close. But getting killed by these next few was the result of you getting hunted. Number 2. Sabered the objective of these documentaries is to show you the most devastating methods of beast-inflicted butchery, and what better than an animal who is built for nothing else but swift killing. Jurassic World is known for its reptiles, but this one's different. We're bringing a mammal into the mix. This is none other than the Smilodon, an ancient feline brought back to life on Manticorp Island. Note that all of the animals here had some sort of unique combat ability, given that these were all purpose to fight other animals in an attempt to capitalize in an elite entertainment black market. This Smilodon made the perfect addition. 
armed with retractable claws and a mouth equipped with two 11-inch long canines. There was nothing safe from the piercing power of these weapons. Humans? Well, here's the interesting part. Out of all of the animals we are discussing today, only this animal has left fossil evidence of attacks on hominid species, many which depict bites on the skull and the infamous saber-shaped teeth entering the eye sockets into the brain. Alternatively, these could have pierced directly through the skull into the frontal lobes of the brain. These giant cats were and are particularly infamous for attacking their prey in this manner, piercing the skulls and bringing their prey to a swift end, as to avoid injury from prey that fights back. In our simulation platform, we'll have a closer look at what happens during such an attack. If attacked from behind, this creature's canines would pierce instantly through the skull or eye sockets targeting the front lobes of the brain. Surprisingly, there have been cases where people survive traumatic injuries to this part of the brain. But not here. The blood loss is too much. And don't forget the damage to the posterior part of your brain, too. Paralyzed and now unconscious, the saber tooth will now feast on your fleshy back, but will most definitely go for the nutrient-rich organs such as your liver. In the real world, many predators such as lions and tigers will go directly for these nutrient-rich organs. When these saber-toothed varieties were alive, they would have been humanity's natural predator, equipped to hunt us better than any modern feline. The next thing to hunt our test subjects will take a similar form, but equipped with weapons seen in no other predator in this franchise. Number 3. Elimination Protocol A protocol is defined as a set of instructions or procedures that are executed in order to complete a certain task. If you end up in Goji Center's simulation platform, the only thing executed will be you. And the execute ing for number three will be done by the Brads. Also known as biorobotic assistance droids, these robots were tasked with maintaining order in these artificial biomes by feeding, repairing, tranking, scouting, and killing, uh, eliminating any organism that shouldn't be there. How, you may ask? Brad units are capable of charging an electric beam from its frontal orifice and then fired towards their target. This beam is charged with enough energy to one, kill smaller dinosaurs, or two, cause enough harm to a medium-sized creature in order to potentially kill it. In this case, you. But what exactly can this do? Getting hit by a high-voltage projectile such as this can cause severe second-degree burns on the impacted area. The energy current flowing through your body would contract your muscles to a degree that you would not be able to move. Yes, this is a combination of getting tased and burned at the same time. If you're a more robust individual, you will probably survive getting hit by one of these, but not several. By judging how the impact reacts with the stuff it hits, we can guess that getting hit near the heart would instigate ventricular fibrillation, or just stop it altogether. A shot in the head or face means you no longer have one. It's no doubt that these kids were extremely lucky to not get hit by these four-legged stormtroopers. But the robotic killing machines don't end here. Up next is something that redefines science fiction. Number 4. Blasted. What's worse than a Brad? Well, a Brad X, of course. Yes, these are the new and far upgraded versions of the Brad robots. Apart from looking frightening already, these are now equipped with a different and more destructive weapon. A superheated plasma-like projectile fired from its mouth with a lethal blast radius of up to three to four feet. Explosive power enough to shatter unprotected organs, burn off skin and underlying tissue, and potentially enough concussive power to kill someone if aimed at the right areas. Additionally, these things were able to capture small dinosaurs and even trank them with expelled gas. But we're here for the kills. In our simulation platform, our Brad X will aim its plasma projectile at this test subject. As we can see, anything in close proximity to this blast will suffer very painful second-degree burns and potentially broken limbs. But a direct hit only means that any frail individual would get destroyed from the impact, killing the victim in an instant. These highly resistant robots almost seemed unstoppable. The next creature on this list was one of the only ones to defeat a Brad X and would definitely shred a human being. Number 5. Gord Alive So what could possibly defeat a full metal killing machine? 
something stronger. In season five of Camp Cretaceous, we were introduced to a dangerous predator who resided in the underground sewer system of Manticorp Island, the Nothosaurus. A quadrupedal aquatic predator that was also capable of jumping out of the water and hunting terrestrial prey. Its long neck allowed it to maneuver its head closer to its target. But one thing that we should point out here is the shape of those teeth. If zoomed in, we see that these are pointed slightly outward as well, meaning that if this head is coming at you, it doesn't even need to have its jaws wide open in order to hurt you. So let's say you're facing a hungry Nothosaurus, and while it lunges at you, it misses with those large teeth, you're still not safe. Even with its mouth halfway open, these teeth could still pierce. Once injured and knocked down, a Nothosaurus would begin to gore into you, ripping you up into more manageable chunks. Why? In the real world, these animals were used to hunting small animals such as fish and other baby dinosaurs. Getting killed by a creature whose main diet is smaller creatures means that you would have to get torn up into small bite-sized pieces in order to get ingested. We could expect no less, however. This creature turned out to be a fierce combatant, being capable of defeating a Brad X and tearing it apart. Number six, food for two. The next creatures we are about to see on this list lived in the forest biome, an artificial section that housed two of the more popular animals on this island, Big Edie and Little Edie, a mother-daughter T-Rex duo that now resided in this island, sharing a wholesome family bond, along with play fighting, mutual care, and food sharing. Even though this would have been the third time we see a T-Rex in a 10 Ways to Die video, today we want to run a little experiment. How much do these two T-Rexes care for each other? And will they share their food again? For this, we will summon this test subject to demonstrate. Okay, so as seen here, guys, we now have live evidence of the T-Rex's benevolent parental behavior towards its daughter, sharing her food with her offspring when resources are scarce. Okay, on to the next dinosaur. Number seven, yanked in two. Another dinosaur that will reappear in this series is the Spinosaurus, except the Spino grew a little larger. Yes, in Camp Cretaceous, the Spinosaurus seemed to have gotten a size buff since its last appearance in Jurassic Park 3. We don't know the exact size, but what we do know is that it measured 44 feet in length back in Isla Sorna. Our Spino, who now lives in Manticorp Island, now rivals the size of the Giga and the Indominus Rex in terms of length. Previously, we covered how the Spino could clamp its jaws around our test subject, and also how its claws could literally mutilate a human. But there's another kill we think is worth mentioning. In Jurassic Park 3, we witnessed Nash get stepped on and then eaten by our Spinosaurus. But we weren't granted the view of the carnage that you will now witness. Once stepped on by an 8-ton theropod on this location of the body only means that any leg bones in this area are now potentially crushed. Pelvic fractures would also be plausible here, but not only that, any organs that are now squeezed against the floor would now be ruptured as well, meaning that our poor fella is going through some intense pain, but he's not dead yet. Up next, our Spinosaurus will reach down and clamp its massive jaws around this human's upper torso and rip upwards. Spino doesn't need to crush the human with its jaws to pick it up, but pierce with enough pressure and rip him in two. The intense tension between both parts of the body means you would literally feel your skin rip along your belly and feel the horror as your intestines spill out. At this point, you will die from shock of blood loss, or you will just pass out unconscious, never to awake again. Believe it or not, we're not done with the Spinosaurus yet. You may think this animal could be one of the most bizarre meat eaters in this franchise, but the next one will leave you with your mouth open. Number eight, hybrid death. In season one of Camp Cretaceous, we met a character who was on a mission of collecting dinosaur DNA and sending it to Manticorp. What does this have to do with anything? This island is home to one of the strangest amalgamations seen in the franchise, the Spinoceratops. Not the Sinoceratops, the Spinoceratops. That's right, folks, people in this island created a mixture between a robust Ceratopsian and the apex predator in Isla Sorda. But why? 
One of Manticorp's undercover initiatives was to provide a controversial service to the rich elites of society. In other words, dinosaur combat. With only the fattest wallets being able to afford to witness this clandestine entertainment. Consequently, the creation of these two juvenile dinosaurs was most likely an attempt in breeding a combat-hardened species of herbivore. With some of the aggressive instincts and intelligence of the Spinosaurus, along with the defensive abilities provided by the Ceratopsian's genetic pool. The result being a Ceratopsian that when mature would be a close to equal match to some of the carnivores. But why does this herbivore make it to the top of this list? Believe it or not, these animals were not just herbivores. They were also piscivores, or technically carnivores that preferred fish, which is what a piscivore really is. So yes, these cute little babies you see here could have potentially grown up to be some bloodthirsty killers had they not been rescued. Now to the fun part. How would a human fare against one adult Spinoceratops? Let's also use some cool tech provided by our Manticorp friends and insert this brain chip inside one of our test subjects. Hey, we commit to these simulations and we leave nothing out. Okay, so now that we have some rudimentary control over this test subject, we will now provoke the Spinoceratops. The result? Classic Ceratopsian behavior. An extremely wide nose horn through the upper torso. We'd like to think that our test subject wouldn't immediately get eaten by this animal, but meat is meat. Eventually, if not fed well, this piscivore will resort to an alternative alimentary source and fall back on eating meat. As bizarre as this may look, this could have been the truth about this dinosaur. Granted, this animal won't go out of its way and hunt other creatures. In the real world, there have been accounts of hippos, deer, cows, and even horses eating meat to make up for any missing elements in its diet. So this half piscivore shouldn't be a big surprise for you anymore. Tell us about other bizarre freaks of nature that you would like to see in the next Jurassic Park Ways to Die. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that like button. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next video!